Hi everyone, today we're continuing our review of the consonant sound groupings. If you are working on implementing a sound wall or you want to review your sound production or you even just want to look at teaching phonics in a different way, then this is for you. Sound production and mouth formations are key to helping our students link the phonemes, those sounds that they hear, to the graphemes, which are our letter representations of those spoken sounds. And it also helps students and teachers with um, cues for error corrections. Explicitly teaching these to our students can help them um, deepen their knowledge and understanding of our language system. If you haven't heard of the term affricates, you're not alone. Many programs or trainings may not introduce this term. However, my guess is that you're already teaching them. So consonants are usually grouped or taught according to their articulation features or how the sound is made. These articulatory gestures are grouped by stops, fricatives, nasals, affricates, liquids, glides, and combinations. You can find the whole series on sound production on my Instagram TV, YouTube channel, and website. So affricates are those sounds that begin as a stop and release as a fricative. A, sound stop, a stop sound is made with a burst of sound or air, and a fricative is a continuant sound that forms friction in the mouth. Affricates are the combination of these two formations. So we have these consonant sounds are paired by voiced and unvoiced groupings, and there's only two affricates. So let's take a look at them. All right, here we have ch. This sound is a production of starting with a stop sound and then releasing the air through a small opening, ch, which causes that friction. You can feel the, re the release of air if you place your hand in front of your mouth. Ch. It's a really quick release of air and the sound, we're not gonna be able to continue it. Ch. Let's um, place your hand there on your voice box and say ch. And you're gonna notice that this is an unvoiced sound, meaning that there's no sound vibrations made during this sound production. Ch. When explicitly teaching the sound to students, we wanna have them look in a mirror to see how their mouth is formed, feel their voice box to determine if it's voiced or unvoiced, and place a hand in front of their mouth to feel the release of air. Ch. There's two different spellings for ch. We have digraph ch, as in chip, lunch, chair, and then we have trigraph tch. Ch. And with the spelling generalization of if we have a one syllable base word and you hear ch after a short vowel sound, then ch is gonna be spelled trigraph tch as in match and which. Final ch can also be spelled digraph ch after a consonant sound, long vowel sound, or vowel pair. The voice pairing for ch is j, and we're gonna have the students look at their mirror again. You can have them make the ch sound and then have them turn their voice on, j. We want them to discover that the only difference is whether it's voiced or unvoiced. Um, we have three different spellings for j. We have the initial position j as in jam, and then we can also have j as in giraffe. So this is that soft G concept of G before E, I, or Y is pronounced j. In the final position of a word, we can use either trigraph D, G, E, or G, E. We're gonna use trigraph D, G, E in a one syllable base word after a short vowel sound as in badge or lodge. Anything else we're gonna use G, E like in hinge, verge. So we wanna remember that we wanna keep our sounds in their purest form and isolation. And if you hear an error in sound production, you wanna model the correct sound and have students echo it right away before moving on. We always wanna bring it back to the formation um, of our mouth and checking whether the sound is a stop sound um, and it releases as a fricative. So following up with lots of activities where students identify the sounds in isolation, within words, connecting to spelling and reading, right? All those things together. All right, I hope this little video helps with identifying those affricates. And if you want more tips and information about reading and dyslexia, be sure to like, follow, and get on our newsletter at thedyslexiaclassroom.com.